So let's look at a few search examples now using a couple of databases. Okay, so now we're in the Geobase database. Geobase and Scopus are both owned and sort of operated by Elsevier, which owns Engineering Village. Again, to get into this complicated landscape of the academic information ecosystem, all that to say that the interface of Geobase is very similar to Scopus and it has a lot of the same functionality. Unfortunately, I can't get into Scopus right now, so I'll use Geobase as the demo. I'm going to add in a number of search fields here. All of our databases allow for that option. So now what I've done is I've run a search on the impact of disasters or storms on planning or management policies for parks. I had that question relatively recently and so I thought this was an interesting an interesting search exercise. So what's happening here? Note first of all I'm not typing in a question. I've put in different fields where I'm putting in related terms in each search area, in each search field or search box. So we could at the top, we could have put in park, and actually let's do it, or protected area. And I might have even put in a star there, but sometimes that can be a little bit, can throw off your results. And a couple of things to note. First of all, we're telling the search engine to look in specific fields. Now over here, we've got all fields, but there's an important thing to note, and this applies to Scopus, to Geobase and to Web of Science. If you look at the fields that are being searched over on the left here, there is nothing that indicates there's any kind of full text. We're going with the default, which is searching all the fields, but there's no full text field indicated here. The reason for that is because all three of the databases that I mentioned, Scopus, Geobase, and Web of Science, are abstract and citation-based databases, which means they don't have full text articles that they contain within their databases. They're just, they're very limited. They contain bibliographic information, abstracts, titles, citations. So the results that you'll get will be actually more relevant to the terms that you put in than something like EBSCO or ProQuest when you actually do have the capacity capability to do a full text search. So that's the first thing. Now, if you're finding that you're getting a lot of records here, the next thing you could do after you run your search in all the fields is you could say, I know that I'm really interested in parks. So I could say, just take a look for those terms in the subject, the title, or the abstract, or maybe just the title. And usually, if you're getting lots of results, if you change your field search to title, you'll get many fewer results that should be really relevant because we're telling a search engine to look for the terms only in the title of the article. And then over here, you can see how we're linking the terms together using our Boolean operators. So we're saying look for park or the phrase protected area and any of our terms over here linked with or and any of our terms over here. These search boxes should all contain synonyms or terms that are related to one another, like terms. Down below, we are sorting our results by relevance. We could change that to date, newest, date oldest, author, and so on. Now, this is one thing that I really like about the Geobase database. First of all, it allows us to limit by geographic terms. And that refers to the area or specific geography where the research has been done versus, and this is important, down below the country or re region. That actually refers to the origin of the researcher, let's say. So keep that in mind. Geographic terms actually are more relevant to where the research has been conducted, the study area. Another important thing is the controlled vocabulary. I mentioned this before. You can see in Geobase, if we click on view more, these are the terms that have been added by the researchers or by the indexers. And this can be very helpful when it comes to building out your own search strategies. There's a lot here. Geobase and Web of Science are, uh, well, Geobase is particularly good for controlled vocabulary. Uh, Web of Science is better for author added keywords or keywords plus. Now, the other thing to note is that under document type, we see journal article, conference article, book, book chapter, that's it. 
to get peer-reviewed articles, you would hit journal article and limit to. So that removes, should, things like book reviews, letters to the editor, and so on. Now I'm in the Web of Science database, and I've replicated the search that I did over in GeoBase just to show you something about Web of Science, same with GeoBase. If we scroll down here, we'll see that there are all kinds of different document types, book chapters, proceedings papers, letters to the editor, notes, books, all kinds of different things that are not in themselves peer-reviewed. So in order to get the peer-reviewed articles, we want to actually select articles, refine. That should bring us to good peer-reviewed articles. The other thing about Web of Science, and I think I'll be talking about this in video dedicated to Web of Science specifically, but I just want to note that you are able, the default now sort is by relevance, but you're able to sort by highly cited papers or usage within Web of Science itself. Those can be really helpful when you're looking for work in the field that you really should be looking at as you're building out your literature review. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is one thing about the Omni database that is, it's a bit of an annoyance, to be honest, and uh, that is that most research databases are not case sensitive. So when we were doing our searches before and linking together our terms using Boolean operators, it wouldn't matter if you typed AND in all caps or lowercase, doesn't matter. Every one of our databases that we license, that's the convention, except for Omni. Omni is case sensitive. So that means that when you're doing a search, it might, in Omni, it's probably best to use caps when you're doing your search. And definitely, if you're using the Boolean operators, as we were doing before in our examples, when you're searching in Omni, they have to be in all caps or else the search won't work. You'll get really poor results or no results at all. It may even be better just to run all your searches in all caps and record them somewhere. The other uh, thing I should mention, if you have any questions, there is always fairly good help in each particular database about how do you put together search strings, how do you use operators, how do you use truncation, what do they recognize as conventions. So there's usually a little link to help there, and I find I'm going to the help a lot of the times in these databases. So check that out. I'm always happy to help you as well. There's a few things I didn't talk about in this video that I'm going to address in later videos, like managing your results, setting up accounts, setting up alerts. But if you do have any questions about any of these things, please feel free to get in touch with me. Thanks for watching.